Hi, I'm Laurie and I'm bringing you part two of the exporting 3D renders out of Cinema 4D and importing for Revision Effects plugin series. Please watch part one first. In this tutorial, we'll be building onto the base that we started in the first tutorial. We will talk about the multipass layers needed in Cinema 4D in addition to the ones we used in the first tutorial. In this example, we're using After Effects for the compositing end, but we work in other hosts too. Let's jump right into Cinema 4D. We're using version 13 and see which multipass layers we're using. Here in Cinema 4D, we've already seen this animation of the bouncing monitor. Our goal now is to apply another texture using Remap UV, but this time to the banner. We will also use a depth mat to see how to do a rack focus effect with SmoothKit Z Blur, and then add motion blur in post with our compositing system. We'll be splitting our render into two layers, foreground and background, to achieve a better result since we'll be adding depth based blur and motion blur at the same time. You'll have the opportunity to see several other plugins put to good use. For the foreground render, we need an RGBA beauty pass, a UV map pass, we need a motion vector pass to use with Real Smart Motion Blur. We also need a depth pass to use with Smooth Kit Z Blur. A normals pass because we'll show how to change the appearance of the surfaces with this pass. We also need a couple of object buffer passes to segment the monitor screen icon and we saw how they were set up in the first tutorial. Uh, for the banner we need to separate the banner into different surfaces because it was not made as an extrusion like the other element we showed in the first tutorial. So it requires different handling. It's a procedural parametric object not polygons. For the background render, we need the RGBA beauty pass, a motion vector pass, and a depth pass. I won't cover all the render settings because I covered those in depth in the first tutorial. We also need an object buffer for just the face of the banner, so we can switch out different logos on that object. Since the banner is not an extrude object like the monitor was, it's a slightly different technique for separating the surfaces. This is what we do. This object is a deformed cube, so what we need to do is use the split function. We select the banner object in Banner Manager, and you can see that the blue icon indicates that it's a parametric cube. You can choose Separate Surfaces under Cube Object. Now you can hit C on the keyboard to convert that to geometry polygons, and you'll see that now this is a proper geometric object. You can see that we now have different sections for each surface. If you select face 1, you see that is the face that we want the object buffer for. Now we can add a compositing tag for each surface and check the scene by camera only for face 1. We can make this object buffer 6. We also have object buffer 5 for the whole banner. There are a few other things I need to check and be aware of. We want to look at the options for the motion vector pass. We can set the motion scale or displacement value to 2048 for now. This is a scaling value to remember to match when we get over to Real Smart Motion Blur. We'll need to use the same number as the max displacement value. Let's set it to 2048 for now. Again, in Cinema 4D, make sure the multi pass straight alpha is checked so the edge pixels for these buffers are as expected by us. Since these multi channel passes won't come with an embedded alpha channel in Cinema 4D renders, the beauty pass can still be pre mold You do have in your compositing system the ability to make sure all these are properly interpreted. Okay, now I have all my elements rendered and loaded in After Effects. First I want to make sure the project is 16-bit or 32-bit float, otherwise my texture mapping will be pixelated. I can verify that my UV and motion vector passes are 16 or 32 bit float. In this case I use zip 16 because it's a small image to map. Using zip 16 for RGBA is fine, but 16 bit or 32 bit float for the other passes is preferable. Second, I want to make sure using interpret footage that I have preserve RGB selected in color management of the footage for the motion vector and UV passes. Since these values don't represent color data, having them color managed would defeat the purpose. Also, make sure all RGBA passes, whatever has alpha, says straight in interpret footage, if you check straight alpha in Cinema 4D. Since we already went through the monitor comp and how to use remap and real smart motion blur in that comp, we will skip that in this tutorial and concentrate on the banner and add some additional plugins. 
we can start here. We are assembling this as foreground and background, and then we comp the foreground over the background. So we can have control over the motion blur and Z blur separate for the background. We can go to this comp, TUT0055 background main, and go to smooth kit Z blur, and we can choose the depth pass here for our depth source. Then all we need to do is change the blur amount. We will leave everything else on the default settings. We note the amount of blur we use because we want to match that for the foreground elements for the Z blur. You can animate the blur amount itself or the fall off or the other controls that affect the focus. In this case, since the banner is not on for long, we, we won't have time for a full rack focus effect. For the motion blur, we can choose the motion vector pass for the motion vector source. We can also choose the blur amount, and remember that motion scale displacement value we set to 2048 in Cinema 4D? Well, this is the place we need to match that value. So we set this to 2048 for max displays. For the foreground, before we blur anything, we'll apply the texture. We're referring to the banner since we already did the monitor. We rendered a separate object buffer for the banner. We assemble in two composite UV. If I start with layer 6, you can see that if I disable remap UV, we can look at the effect controls for remap UV. We can select the Revision Effects logo as our texture, but this is where we could use additional textures and swap out for different logos or whatever we want to map onto the spanner. Note, we can move the position a bit and remap to center the logo better. What else? If we double click on layer 10 where it says Use Normals, we can see how we use the normals to change the look of the banner with the Shade from Normals plugin. Also, with Shade Normals, we can adjust the light direction and change the look easily. This is useful for matching the environment better. We can discuss this further in another tutorial. Let me take the opportunity to show you a little trick. First, notice there's a little black edge. We can use Refill Alpha to shrink the edge off of here by entering a number for choking. Then what we can do is set the menu to None. This can be a great way to fill a depth pass, for example, so a composited live action element collects depth values from CG it's being composited with. Okay, now that we've applied textures, the next step is to add blurs. We can go to the 3 Add Z Blur in Real Smart Motion Blur comp. We've already set the background, so now we want to apply Z Blur to the foreground, and we'll match that to the background. The value in Z Blur for background should match the value of Z Blur for the foreground, where we stop the animation. Now we just composite the foreground over the background, and we're good to go.